What are my top five tips for starting a meal plan company? Well, that question actually comes from Kelly in Colorado. Kelly, that's an awesome question. I'm surprised I don't have a top five yet, but by the end of this video, I definitely will because that's what we're covering in this video. Now, my name is Casey Cochran. I am one of the founders of Fit Food Fresh, Florida's highest rated meal plan company. And I essentially started this YouTube channel just to share my experiences. Uh, my business partner and I are gonna just drop whatever knowledge we have, answer whatever questions we can. So definitely like, comment, subscribe, get the little alert bell, all that good stuff. And uh, if you have any questions like Kelly's or you have any critiques or ideas or things you want me to discuss, please let me know. So again, Kelly, thank you for the question. Um, I should have had this one already. Okay, so I'm not gonna do this in any particular order just because um, I think that's too subjective and it really depends on what your strengths are. Um, but I think in general, these are, and depending on how you're structuring things, but in general, trying to imagine all the different ways you're doing a meal plan company, I think these five tips would be um, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. They don't need to be in any kind of order because they're that good. So tip number one is gonna be keeping it simple. You've heard the uh, keep, it, keep it simple stupid. If I had a whiteboard, I'd be writing K-I-S-S, case on there. Uh, well, keep it simple stupid is definitely applicable in this situation because whether it's your menu or your ordering process or delivery options or whatever else, you've got so many different variables in this business already. The least amount, especially when you're starting off, um, the least amount of variables you have, the better, and it'll keep, it's just less things to go wrong, really. Um, being, I, it's very tempting to offer all the things that you wanted. We started Fit Food Fresh. Um, if you aren't familiar with our story, my business partner and I started Fit Food Fresh as members. We weren't cooks, we weren't nutritionists, we weren't trainers or anything like that. We were just on meal plan companies Loved the concept, didn't think anybody was doing it the way we wanted it done, so we decided to become the solution. So we didn't, sorry about that, just kick the little stand there. We didn't um, know what we were doing getting into this, and all we knew is we wanted it to be a certain way. We wanted to be able to pick our own food and this, that. We wanted to have a nice big menu. We made things a little bit harder than they should have been in the beginning, because we didn't know that keep it simple stupid uh, related so well to this business and it did going back I would have um, kept the menu a lot more simple to begin with because once you set those expectations once you have 30 items on the menu it's hard to go back to 20 or 15 um, once you start doing vegan and you start catering to some vegan it's hard to pull it back and just do vegetarian or drop it all together because there's only a handful of them because you will lose them and when you have to lose members or clients in such uh, an early phase of your business when they're making up a large chunk of your revenue, you're just like, oh, should I keep this menu on and just try to, you know, drum up enough people to order from it so that it justifies production? Or, you know, I don't want to get specific, but because um, it was, I handle that. Go in, check out the production video um, because I definitely explain the perils in more um, specificity. Um, but keep it simple, stupid. We'll, we'll keep it that. So that's tip number one, all right? Tip number one. Gotta make sure, sure it shows up guy in the window just thought I was signaling to him. What's up? Uh, so tip number two. Tip number two is going to be, I want this to not be scary, but uh, escape the machine. The machine is the business. And I mentioned this in production as well, specifically, specifically discussing um, chefs or people who start the meal plan as an owner cooker, cook, cook. Um, you might not be a classically trained or a you not, it might not be a trained chef or a real chef, but if what I mean by chef is if you're the person cooking the food, it's a dangerous position to be in. But at least that's obvious. The problem is if you're, if you're an integral piece of the business, you obviously can't take vacations or um, do a whole lot without the, vis the business taking some kind of a, a, a hit. If you're the one cooking um, and you know, it, the business relies on you to make food, you can't leave. Otherwise, food's not gonna be made, right? So that that also applies, at least it's obvious for the chef, like I mentioned, there's other positions in the company where you might not be the chef, you might be the salesperson. Um, and if the business is very reliant on sales and you're very good at sales and you're the one contributing most or all of the sales, you can't leave, otherwise there's no sales. Customer service, 
same thing. If you're the one handling all the problems and solving all the problems and you know handling all the irate customers or, or whatever else, you can't go away. You have to be there all the time. So you're built within the machine. Now imagine some kind of machine and there's a wheel that has to be spun and you're in there manually spinning the wheel. You stop spinning the wheel and the machine doesn't work or starts breaking down or whatever. So you gotta be in there spinning it. Now you can automate this process of spinning the wheel with you know some added piece of machinery that then sp spins the wheel for you. That might be uh, an analogy for software to automate, you know, like that. And then uh, you can also hire someone to spin the wheel for you. So that's not as ideal, but if it's production, production's not gonna be solved by software. So that's a situation where you're the chef, spinning the wheel is making the food in this analogy, and you gotta hire some other chef to go in there and spin the wheel, which as you may recall is production. Um, so yeah, software or hiring is gonna be what gets you out of the, the machine. Um, but be very careful in the beginning I know it's gonna be frustrating because you're not gonna have the money or the resources to remove yourself from the machine, but have that plan to con constantly escape the machine. That was our biggest goal. When we started this, we were the drivers, we did the shopping, we did everything but cooking. Fortunately, we didn't have the skill and culinary confidence in the kitchen, you like that alliteration, to um, take over uh, the production. And thank God, because we were really bad cooks and it would've been bad, but, we, we were doing everything else, and it was very scary for us to let go of uh, customer service, for instance. That was probably the biggest one. Deliveries was another thing, because that's, and I've got another video on delivery, definitely check that out. And I got another one on customer service, check that one out. But customer service is such an intimate part of the business, and that could be what saves the business and fosters retention. Um, sales is something as well, because nobody's gonna sell it like you. And you should always consider yourself a salesman, so you'll never delegate that completely out but there's still gonna be a meeting that, or a presentation or an event that you're not going to go to and somebody else is gonna to have to sell. Even if you're selling, there's some place that you're gonna to wanna to eventually grow the business to have somebody else replicate that effort, selling or talking on the phone or delivering something or cooking something. For the business to grow, you have to be able to be outside of the machine and not only focus on helping things grow, but also making sure that everything is running efficiently. It's hard when your perspective is deep within the machine and all you can see is gears. You gotta look all the way back here and see, okay, that's not running with this very well. This is the problem. Um, so good machine analogy. I, I made that off the top of my head, stuck with it, rolled on right on through to number three plan for growth. You like how that fits in? We were just talking about the machine and actually the first one uh, with keeping it simple. Also kind of loose related to growth, but plan for growth. With this business, there's, there's many businesses that are like this in that um, growth can kill you if you don't plan for it. If you are too big, too fast, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And with the margins being so tight, um, little setbacks can be big setbacks very quickly. So plan for growth. Plan for growth with what kind of software you're going to be needing to make your business easier. What manual things are being done? What menial things are being done um, that are necessary but should be done by software? Um, I already got into production, so we'll leave that. Plan for production scaling. Um, cold, cold storage after production. You wouldn't think of that. You're thinking, oh, I gotta hire more people to make the food. You need more places more space that is cold enough to keep the food after it's been cooked before you've delivered it, right? That's something we didn't think about when we first got into this. Like our idea of what a kitchen would look like that could produce this kind of stuff back when we were renting a kitchen, we had no idea because we were doing like dozens of people a week back then. Now, um, hundreds of people a week, thousands of meals a week, there's cold storage issues that We've got a warehouse with two massive walk-in refrigerators that we had to add. They're, they're rooms that are refrigerators. One's 20 by 20, the other one's bigger than that. 20 feet by 20 feet. The other one's bigger than that. And there's companies, you might have a company who's got way bigger, but that's not something that we planned for in the beginning. Again, we weren't from this industry, so we didn't think about it, but there's physical limitations to the space that you're gonna be in, and you don't wanna outgrow them unexpectedly. You wanna see that coming, and, and and adjust for that. Um, freezer space, we don't freeze food. Why do we need freezer space? Because we have so many ice packs. 
We have a 12 by 12 freezer full of speed racks, full of ice packs, and that's not enough. So now we have a half a dozen chest freezers filled with ice packs. There's no food in any of these freezers. This is all ice packs. You wouldn't think that. You're like, oh, the company, we don't freeze food. We got fresh in our name. We don't freeze our food. Huh, what would we need all these freezers for? Ice packs, man, it's crazy. Um, okay, number four, commit to learning. You're gonna be learning a lot. You're gonna be learning about cold storage, as I just told you. You're gonna be learning about software. Um, no, but seriously, this business, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> um, you've got logistics. I, I often tell people you've got the problems of several different businesses. You've got the problems of a catering company. You've got the problems of a delivery slash logistics company. You've got the problems of a restaurant and they've got customer service problems that none of those other companies have. Um, and subscriptions, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. So there's a lot of different developments that are constantly happening. So much stuff is being developed. Your phone is out of date. If it's, you know, six months old, it's out of date. Well, software is, um, you know, uh, rapidly, you know, uh, evolving that way as well. There's not a whole lot out there for meal plans just yet, but there's a lot of stuff that's kind of universal for many businesses that you should be learning about. And it's not as easy because you can't just Google what's a good software program for my meal plan company and have them all spit it out. But for instance, I've got some um, videos not only on software and programs that we've created um, that we will give you access to obviously, um, but also stuff that I'm a big fan of like Zapier. I've got some videos on Zapier. Zapier is Z-A-P-I-E-R. Some people pronounce it Zapier, but they call them Zaps. So I'm assuming Zapier, it's kind of like a, is that an adjective, adverb? I don't know, I dropped out of high school. Um, so whatever, zapier.com, Z-A-P-I-E-R. So cool, check out my videos on that. I got tons of videos, so what have we talked about? You wanna see my uh, the production video, talk about keeping it simple. You wanna see the cash flow quadrant video would be really good for escaping the machine, actually. That'd be a good video for you to check out. Um, now, you can see our cold storage if you want to check out our tour, you can see what kind of cold storage that you need. I got a video on that and uh, software. I've also got videos on that, so check those out. Uh, the one called The Beast is actually a walkthrough of a program that I had to create from scratch on a spreadsheet with all sorts of automation, or not automation, but cross formulation and all sorts of other stuff that you have free access to. If you don't have an ordering system yet, it's better than that spreadsheet that you're working on, I assure you. Um, and CRMs, other stuff like that I'll cover, but um, all this stuff is stuff that I've learned while doing. Like everything that I'm sharing with you, I literally had to learn over the last six years with no prior experience. When we started this business is when that education started. So commit to continual learning. And the software is just part of it. Don't be intimidated by software. If you're completely unfamiliar with it, you don't need it, but just hire somebody who is savvy on it. Um, and it would definitely help you. The more familiar, the better, but don't be afraid. There's definitely companies you're gonna be limited by what you can do, um, but there's also, I mean, you gotta keep up to date with diet trends. Keto wasn't around when we started this. Paleo was new um, when we started this. Um, there's gonna be different marketing trends, which kind of goes back to the software, because you're gonna to wanna to be hip on what's gonna help you uh, most efficiently leverage marketing and automate marketing, um, social media trends, what platforms are good for what. Stay away from Instagram. I'm gonna leave you with that tip, or I'm not gonna leave you yet, I got one more tip but uh, I'm gonna give you that tip um, stay away from Instagram for instance that's something I recently learned I've been studying social media that's another thing I had no real strength in um, really didn't want to use it other than what I had to do for business and now I'm having to get deeper into it because at the end of the day no social media person is ever gonna love your business as much as you and me knowing a little bit more about what their capabilities are, what to expect from them, what they can do, and which ways to go. We had a social media person who was charging us $2,500 a month and pushing Instagram really hard. And we're just like, we're not getting anything from it. Well, now I started learning about social media and all the social media people are saying Instagram is horrible for conversions. It's all for impressions. You're not gonna get any great ROI from Instagram. You may, I don't know, but if you're not, that's why. Um, and that's something I just recently learned. Now, according to this social media expert, we were paying $2,500 a month, Instagram was the way to go. Well, unfortunately in life, people are, if they have something to sell you, it's gonna be, whatever it is, is the best. If they have 
a certain software platform that they're familiar with coding in, that's the best solution for you. If they're only familiar with a certain social media platform, that's going to be the best for you. So they're obviously not going to recommend Facebook when all they know is Instagram. Um, but do your own research at least enough to sit at the table confidently and ask, know when to ask them when to explain their decisions. So right now I would know if she was pitching Instagram, you know, if we could go back months, many months of paying her, she's pitching Instagram. Now I know why, how am I going to convert from, you know, I got a bunch more questions, but I wouldn't know that unless I committed to constantly learning. Um, so tech trends, diets, marketing, all sorts of stuff. And the last thing, this is probably the most important, is gonna be seeking critiques, both as a person, as a business owner, as a business, as a coworker, constantly ask for critiques. I'm fortunate in that my business partner and I, we're on the same level, so I think that allows me to be, it helps me be more open to criticism because I have somebody else, not to like pull rank or anything, and not that I pull rank, but I have somebody who I have to listen to because they are on my level and I have to take their consideration or take their, their feedback into consideration and we, we counsel each other back and forth on how we perform. But then we also have that translate down into the business and how the business runs and we ask our, our clients constantly, you know, what can we do better? Critiques are always more useful than compliments. You know, compliments can be complete bullshit. Sorry for swearing, not really. Complete bullshit. Complete fucking bullshit. Oh, sorry, that was a little bit grotesque. Um, but when you get a critique or an insult, there's normally going to be some truth there, right? So not to say you, you're going to ask for people to insult you, but um, when someone does come up with a critique, there's going to be some truth to it. It might be an exaggeration. It might be a one out of a hundred um, kind of opinion, you know, but you're still going to want to you know, take that all in and let people know that it's appreciated. Let them know what you're going to do with that information. If someone tells you that you're a dick in the morning before you have coffee, it might be hard to hear, especially if you haven't had your coffee yet, but just say, you know what? I'm going to try to be more present in the morning. I appreciate you saying that it's not easy to be critical. So I really appreciate you helping me find a way to improve. And I'm going to try to have my coffee earlier or whatever else. Um, and I'm trying to use, I'm sorry for using a silly ex example like that, but again, it could be anything. It could be something with the company asking, uh, you know, about feedback on food. Someone might say that the steak was too tough. It might be the way they cooked it. So that's going to be one of those one in a hundred, but it's like, you know what? I'm going to ask the chef if there was anything that he did differently. By the way, how are you cooking it? Have you noticed, is it, is it always on your beef products or are, all the, are they always a little bit tougher? Or is it, you know, throughout all of our cooking? Because, you, know, you know, take that critique though. Let them know that you're gonna be trying to solve a problem with that because that'll make them not only feel appreciated, but they're gonna be more likely to give you a critique in the future. And the first couple might be useless. They might be something that you can't do anything with, but every once in a while, you're gonna get a gem that is gonna give you a decision, uh, give you an idea help you make a decision that will completely, you know, change your business, hopefully for the better. Hopefully you don't stop serving something because one person complained about it, or hopefully you don't, you know, do a drastic course of change because what, you know, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, before I get a little bit too carried away, I'm going to end it right there. So that's the five. So again, we're going to keep it simple. Um, we're going to try to escape the machine. We're going to plan for growth, commit to learning, and seek critiques and now honestly if you if you follow those five i i mean you would have you would avoid probably 90 percent of the problems that we've had and a lot of stuff still affects us or we still have scars to this day because these were things that we didn't consider we made our menu too complicated we made um we waited way too long to get ourselves out of the machine it definitely definitely uh stunted our growth um, we didn't plan for growth. We were blindsided by a few things. There were some software platforms that we didn't realize um, while those systems were elegant and they looked great and they functioned very well at a small level. Once we started running higher transactions through, they didn't perform well. Once we started having um, more data and they had to pull it all at one time, then we started having issues where the browsers would time out. Um, so those are issues with growth that we didn't see. 
Um, committed to learning, at least, I would say that we, uh, we've always been committed to learning and we've always been seeking critiques. So those three, I should say, are uh, the three that really hurt us. The other two we were doing, but in spite of those, these other three definitely held us back. And I would say, I would, I would honestly say to you, um, and this isn't something that I'm you know, very proud to admit, I'd say there's, there's easily two years, and I think my business partner would agree, um, I feel like there's two years that we lost. And it was f from a number of things, but those three things definitely contributed to it, especially the planning for growth um, related to software. So I'd say there's about two years of our business that we lost um, in making progress because of uh, really simple things like this. So. Um, it seems like a simple list, and I would love to get into more depth. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, comment below, and I'll get into more specifics. But I just wanted to give you something relatively quick. 20 minutes is enough. Again, please like, comment, subscribe, um, message me. Let me know if there's anything else that I can cover. Um, like I said, I'd be happy to go into more detail. Check out those other videos that I mentioned on uh, the Cashflow Quadrant on production um, on our software, check out a tour of the place. Did one. Uh, I'm gonna probably do another tour and get uh, a bit more intimate with the different equipment that we have. So keep an eye out for that. If you got the alert, that little bell, and the subscription, it's gonna be a lot easier. And then I've also got some boxes that I'll probably be putting. I don't know up here, maybe some up here, down here. Boxes here, here, four of them. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Thank you guys very much again. My name is Casey Cochran. Coming out of the headquarters of Fit Food Fresh, there's Han Solo. Han says nothing because he's in carbonite.